Sports Podcast, episode number 188. No Nick Quags this week. He's working hard, doing something else. I wasn't here last week, so I can only respect the decision. Uh, Alan Hegan, the constant on that side. Jared Skelly here at Couch Guy Sports. Follow the network, Couch Guy Sports Podcast. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher. You know the game by now. Spotify. I listen to podcasts on Spotify, so that's a good place to listen to in the car. I don't want to go anywhere now, so just whatever. Um, Al, how was your holiday, friend? It was good. It was good to spend time with family. I'm assuming you did the same. Did you spoil your baby? Did you do yeah, the right thing? You know, first Christmas. It's really for parents, by the way. First Christmas with a kid. Like, she's only – she turned five months old the day after Christmas. So she's not – obviously, she's not even six months yet. Um, and so, like, that first Christmas when you're not really that old, like, it's really for the parents. We got – we knew what we were getting, obviously, and, like, we, we wrapped it all and helped her wrap it. Like, there's some cute pictures of her biting the presents because that's just what <laughs> cute babies do. Um, it was just some toys that we needed, stuff like that. My parents got her stuff. Her parents got her stuff. Like, it is – next year, next year will be fun. What, what was the best gift that you gave her? Oh, you know what we got her? It's a big – Besides clothes, because my family got her clothes. The right. you know, like you know those toys at like the doctor's office with like the beads you can spin around, like play with. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's one of those, but like it's a solid block piece, and there's also games wrapped around the side. So there's like Ooh. multiple. It's pretty cool. It's sick. Yeah, it is sick. Um, what was I gonna say? Did you get her a volleyball yet? Now nah, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. I have a look. I've started giving her. We have a little, um, like mini volleyball. That's pretty small. Um, like Molten makes them just to throw people like if you if we watch college volleyball at all they like throw them out in the stands before games like those really mini ones. Um, we've gotten her one of those. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm starting her young. I'm starting her young. Class of twenty thirty. Yeah. Class of twenty thirty nine. Watch out. Boom. I mean, her middle name is Blaze. What can I say? She's gonna be <laughs> she's a heck of an athlete. Um, hopefully, she gets on the golf course with me. That'd be sweet. Oh, that uh, that now you're now you're being a, a beggar. Beggars can't be choosers, Jared. That'd be sweet. I would choose that. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, no. First Christmas with her was great um we just started giving her solids the other, yesterday like big milestones Ooh. this week big milestones um scally pop in the scally. house Feed, feeding her some pureed carrots it's great good stuff um but yeah al the patriots suck that's an understatement they suck this is bad we're gonna get into it a little bit more i have some things i want to talk about with the patriots cam newton obviously i I'm changing my tune on Cave Newton. I will say this. I kind of feel bad for the guy, and I'll tell you why. I I think we're in the same boat, but we're going to have a good discussion about that. I kind of feel bad for Cam Newton. Um, We'll talk about, obviously, the Bills and what they're doing in that game last night. That was a heck of a Monday night football game to watch. I stupidly watched the whole thing because I can't keep my eyes off the suck. Same. Um, The Celtics, they're in in full swing. They're playing tonight as we record this on Tuesday. Um, They're in full swing, so I want to touch on them too. so, yeah, so there's a lot to get into between those two teams. Bruins are right around the corner, so we'll obviously talk about them as that season gets a little closer after the new year. Um, and the Red Sox, look out for into the triangle. Head into the triangle. New episode being recorded tomorrow, Wednesday. We, we Might have some, a little surprise for you guys, cooking. too. We have a surprise. We do. We have a surprise. It's Just a great like surprise. You. It's a great surprise for all of us. It's a great surprise. So we have a surprise for that. So obviously follow that podcast as well. And all the podcasts on the network. F it. They're all great podcasts. But let's start here. Al, weekly dump. We got to jump into it. A lot of stuff going on. Pew. Pew. The San Diego Padres, Al. Slam Diego. They are all in. Yeah. They, they just are. traded for Blake Snell and you, Darvish, as well as, and I, I'm going to ask your favor for the name here, because I can't even pronounce it. I don't remember. The, the guy from overseas. They also just signed him, second baseman, slash shortstop. Hey, hey Sung Kim or something? Is that his name? Something like, I think that you might be right. Um, guy hits dingers. Dingers. Power move. The Padres are in. You had this guy as a position player when you already have the moon at position players. You had two of the best starting pitchers. I think Hugh Darvis is still one of the best pitchers in the game. Like, I just think he's being overlooked. He, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be good. He'll be good for where he is in that rotation. That rotation – is stupid. Um, Tampa Bay Rays couldn't afford Blake Snell, pulled the Tampa Bay Rays and just traded him away. Typical Rays fashion. Uh, so he's gone. Thank God. Side note for the Red Sox, he's not in the AL East anymore. Uh, Blake Snell is other side of the country. Don Arcillo, man, you are going to have a fun season. Yeah, so, so is Jose Alvarado. He's gone too. He's gone too. This is great. Just get everyone good out of the Tampa Bay Rays system and out of the AL East as the Red Sox are going to be a little bit better this year, um, potentially. Red Sox have been stagnant, but Blake Snell and you Darvish to the Padres, Slam Diego, all in. 
I'm all in with the Padres this year. Uh, Jared Goff will miss week 17 after having thumb surgery. Um, he is expected back in the playoffs if they make it. They're playing the Cardinals Sunday. They need to win to get in. The Cardinals will win if will get in if they win that game. Uh, Kyler Murray's also banged up, and he might not play. So it could be the battle of backups for uh, a playoff spot, which would be kind I, of interesting. I thought for that one, I thought if Chicago wins against Green Bay, which they might rest their stars, I thought if Chicago wins, they're in. I believe so, but I think the Rams. The Rams, also, yes. The Cardinals, I think, need to win, and then the Bears to need lose. help. Yeah, yeah, but they need to win Sunday. Like they need to win. Right, Sunday. right, 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 right. Um, the Rams yeah. will win. The Rams will get in if they win. Um, but Jerry Goff's not playing, so who the heck knows how that's going to go? Um, even with Jerry Goff playing, who the heck how that knows how that's going to go? So um, Rams are in a touch spot. The Patriots. We'll talk about this in more detail. Got routed by the Bills, uh, thirty-eight to nine. Is that we, there was a touchdown in there, just missed an extra point, uh, and finished the season versus the Jets, in which they also might lose. Um, good. Jim, go ahead. Oh, good. I just said good. Oh, yeah. No, they'll, they'll – there's a good chance they lose Sunday. Good. I'm, I'm guessing Jared Stidham will be playing. Uh, John Morant sprained his ankle, walked, came out in a boot. Um, don't know a timeline yet. They're getting an MRI. He's getting an MRI today. Um, but not look, didn't look good for him or my fantasy team with John Morant come down on uh, – one of the Brooklyn Nets players foot and wide receiver Devontae Smith, Alabama AP player of the year playoffs are right around the corner going for that national title. Um, hopefully the Patriots bring in their quarterback. That'd be great. We'll talk about that in more detail. Um, and the Steelers are going to be starting Mason Rudolph on Sunday in a key yeah. game against the Cleveland Browns. So Cleveland, if you don't win this oh, game, this, guys, this, they, they are literally this ending it. this playoff spot. With the silver platter. Mind you, they should have already been in. The Jets' yes. loss was awful. I'll give, them, I'll give them a little bit of slack because the Jets honestly have been playing better. Like, it's not like the Jets have just won off. They now won two in a row. Yep. And they also Completely didn't have – away Trevor Lawrence. They said, F it. I want to win three football games and not get Trevor Lawrence. That's what they said. And they also didn't have any of their wide receivers. Not any of them. They had to pull up two from the practice squad. That being said, the Browns still should have beat the Jets. Yes. I, yeah, they should have. Still should have beat the Jets. That being said – they can still get in the playoffs. If yeah, they they're just going to win. Steelers, they win. They're no in. Rob, all they got to do is win Sunday, and they should have everyone back that they didn't have because of COVID. The, pay, the Steelers are not playing Big Ben at you all. You win, you're in. You win, you win you're, in. you're in, and it's all that was forgotten. The Browns, if they don't get in the playoffs this year, it is a dead failure. And mind you, there's, pro- yeah, there's going to be an 11-5 team in the AFC that doesn't get in. Or 10-6. Because you look at Dolphins – Ravens, Browns, Colts. Colts are the ones on the outside looking in right now. Yes, they are. Uh, Colts could still win their division. Is, is the division the only way the Colts get in? No, I think if the Colts win and the Browns lose, they're in. Okay. Because, so, does that sound right? Well, I guess it's, if any of those teams lose, they're in, right? Because if, if, they're, all, if they're all 10 and 5. Yeah, if there's, yeah because if, yeah, if, wind, if Indy wins and then... One of those three teams loses, they're in. Right, and if, either, and if both... Cleveland and Indy win, or they both lose. Cleveland owns the tiebreaker yeah, because they so, beat Indy in the regular exactly, season. Exactly. Yeah. So. Indy's easiest way is just the Titans to lose, and mm-hmm. the and Indy to win. And the Titans are, mind you, side note: the Titans are playing Houston. And if you didn't see it, JJ Watt went off on his team when he was asked in the media, like, "How do you get up for a game?" And he basically, if you haven't seen it, go. To, it's, all, it's all over Twitter if you haven't seen it. Um, and J.J. Watt basically just went off saying, if you can't get up, we're making a crap ton of money to play a game. If you can't get up as a professional football team, I don't care how bad you are. If you can't get your, put your work in, you shouldn't be here, essentially. And, like, f- try to fire up this team. Go watch that. Uh, yeah. Go watch that if you haven't yet. It's on Twitter. Just type in J.J. Watt speech. If you're You'll Mike Vrabel, if you're Mike Vrabel, you go, uh-oh. Like, if you're the Houston Texans and you don't get up and play for J.J. Watt, who – go home. Who are you? That, I wanted to run through a brick wall after watching J.J. Watt. I want him to be a Patriot. He's like a guy who, like, you know, you look around the league and you say, who's that guy who should be a Patriot you thought would be a Patriot but never was? It's Larry Fitzgerald yep. and J.J. Watt. Like, those guys are Patriots, but they never have been Patriots. It's absolutely insane. And I would love for him to come here, but it'd be a waste because they're going to suck for a few years. So why waste J.J. Watt here? Um, they have a better chance of being better good in Houston next year than they do with J.J. Watt here. So – I would stay in Houston if I was him, but there's a lot going on. That's your weekly dump, Al. Yes. Man, there's a lot going on uh, for, for an end of the year in between holidays. Uh, you know how much is going on. Scott Zolak came off on vacation today, local sports radio here in Boston. 
to work because that's how bad he wanted to talk about the Patriots. This is a guy who takes vacation like, like it's nothing. True. He can and do whatever he, he can, wants. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Call a commentator for the Patriots. For those of you who don't know or live in the area, Scott Zolak, former Patriots quarterback, literally takes vacations whenever he wants. He, everyone else was on vacation, all the main hosts for, this, for the week. He came back for today to talk about the Patriots. That's how pissed off he was after calling that game yesterday. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot going on. But it's also, of course, what's going on is, is Manscaped. And support for Couch Guy Sports podcast, and all of, honestly, all of Couch Guy Sports, is from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Yeah, it's still the holiday season. Untrimmed pubes are the thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I am talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. I don't even care that it's past Christmas because get yourself a New Year's present. It's still the holiday season. You have those New Year's resolutions. One of these resolutions, guys, should honestly be to stay clean downstairs. Um, Nick's talked about it forever. He's used scissors when he was a kid. He clipped down there. It nicks everywhere. You don't want that. You don't want to mess with that. You know, the best thing to use is the Manscaped trimmer and all the accessories around it. And the reason why it's so revolutionary, it has designed the electric trimmer, their lawnmower 3.0. It's propriety advanced skin safe technology. So this trimmer reduces cuts on your nuts. It was also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. That's how I use it. I'll, I'll be fully transparent. I'm a shower shaper. It's easy. You can oh, yeah. Charge it in, so you grab it and you go. It's easy cleanup. And you're, you're, you're already naked, right, Al? You're already conveniently located, and you can just go to town. And it's nice that it's waterproof. You can rinse it off and throw it back on the charger. It's perfect. Um, and it's got a little mini light on it, which is always nice to make sure you get all the details. Uh, it comes inside their brand new Perfect Package 3.0, which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. New Year's resolutions, if you have a parent or a friend that you know, right, that is just, just you might know they're a little dirty or they might smell a little funky. Who knows what it is? There's a good chance they need the 3.0 and the lawnmower. So go give them the package, gift it to them. They're also going to get the crop preserver, is anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits, guys, and why are you not putting it deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Yes, guys, your balls stink. That's what I'm talking about. Speaking of sweaty and stinky balls, I am thankful for their crop reviver. This product, along with the Crop Preserver, keep your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking. The Perfect Package will also come with a pair of their Manscaped boxers. Uh, that'll keep your junk f- fresh all day, guys. It's great. Nick and I both wear them on the golf course when, during, when the weather's warm enough. It's it, really anti-chafing technology. It's amazing. It is the season to Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and friends the best gift for the New Year's resolution of all Manscaped is the pre- Perfect Package 3.0. Get 20% off free shipping with code COUCHGUY20. Two zero at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Celebrate leaving 2020. Al, we're jumping into 2021. We're getting rid of the horrible year that's been 2020. Celebrate that with the perfect package 3.0. 20% off and free shipping with the code couchguy20 at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use the code couchguy20. Now we're getting that. This is the last episode of 2020. Yeah, we are. Use that code couchguy20. Get out of 2020 with the perfect package and the lawnmower 3.0. Beautiful technology. It's a beautiful thing. Al has one. I do. Nick might have two. Harry, dude. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Manscaped, we love you guys. Appreciate you. Um, you know who we don't Patriots. love? I was going to say, you know who we don't love? Yeah. The New England Patriots. New England Patriots. Let's start with the Patriots and the show of the Celtics. A lot to dig in with the Patriots here. I will say this first. Oh, man, we have to embrace the suck, man. (laughs) This is not going to be an overnight thing, and I will be the first to admit I am at the age where I really only paid attention to the Patriots when they've won, right? Like, I was very young when they got Brady. That's when I started to really watch football and get into it anyway, right? Like, I watched a year of Bledsoe. My first really remembrance of football was that year, that that first Super Bowl season. That's when I really started to watch football. So, yes, my my only memories really are – success right the only missed playoff experience i have is 11 and 5 with matt castle like they i've never had a never had to watch a losing season which they officially will have now they are six and nine there's only one game left the best they can do is seven and ten no uh yeah seven and nine that's the best they can do this is not an overnight thing this team now has so many holes yeah, quarterback is the big one, obviously, because you're going from Tom Brady and the greatest of all time, who now I'm all in for. Next three, four years, 
I, I'm all in with Tom Brady, however long he's playing. Now, now you have to go from Tom Brady to not even like Drew Brees, not, not even Andrew Luck. You're down at the bottom of the league. You have one of the worst rosters in the league. And side note, and I don't want to dive too much into this. If anyone thinks this is Belichick's fault, he has like one of the worst rosters in football right now. Cap space, most opt-outs for COVID in football. Belichick is the greatest of all time. And the fact that he has a chance to get seven wins with this roster out, any other coach in this league, they're like a three-win team. Yeah. They're competing for Trevor Lawrence and with a lot of other coaches. So look, don't, this is not on Belichick. But this team has a lot of holes, Al. Quarterback's the big one. Oh, that's the one everyone talks about. You have to get a quarterback first, and I think there's a plan there, but I hope, right? But what do you do on defense, right? Devin McCourty said he wants to play again. Great. But, like, does Hightower, Chung come back? Do they come back, right? Off? Do you get Marcus Cannon back? Do you have to deal with um, Gilmore leaving, which means J.C. Jackson is your number one, which we've seen that he cannot be the number one guy yet if he's going to be right? Like he, he's benefited from Gilmore taking a lot of that attention and a lot of these interceptions this year because of that. Like there's a lot of questions here and it's not just at the quarterback position now. No. And we've been talking about the whole year. We know what the issues are. First thing, first things first, besides the quarterback, how about a wide receiver, especially this year, Jared, with this free agent class that's coming up, there are a lot of good names. Have you seen the names that are on that list? A few, just to note, Juju Smith Schuster, mm -hmm. Will Fuller, those are two names that Corey I Davis, Corey Dave Davis, Hope. another one. So there is no excuse for you. And they showed the graphic on the Monday night game last night. The Patriots have $54 million in cap space. That's the fourth highest in the NFL this off season. So you have the chance to go out and get one of those free agent wide receivers. You need to do it. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. Also tight ends. We've been talking about this forever, Jared, forever. Since Literally. And mm -hmm. the thing is, it's not like Belichick didn't do the right thing in the draft. He went out and got two tight ends. He went out and got Devin Asiasi and Dalton Keene. But yeah. how much have they been used besides for blocking this year? I, I will say, though, Asiasi played like 90-something percent of snaps last. He played like 47 out of 50 snaps, I saw. You never would have known, for one. I, I will give them a pass on the tight end drafting this year because typically tight ends start to flourish year two, year three. Right. Also, who the heck was throwing him the football? Like, this is, is supposed to be this great tight end guy, right? Tight end catch, pass catcher. Dalton Keene could do a little bit of both, but like Asiasi was supposed to be like a, this pass catcher. How many times did he even get the ball thrown to him? Yeah. So oh, by the by the way, just sorry to cut you off, no. but to go back onto it, look the wide receiver class. I have the free agents right here on my phone. Listen to some of these names besides the ones I just told you: AJ Green, Allen Robinson, T.Y. Hilton, Marvin Jones. Sammy Watkins, Willie Sneed, Corderell Patterson. Now, Corderell Patterson, I know he's not an elite wide receiver, but he has speed. Like, he's probably the best weapon Chicago has right now outside of Allen Robinson and David Montgomery. And mm -hmm. you had Patterson in the fold during the 2018 Super Bowl run. He was a part of it. And you have John Ross. You have – there. the point I'm trying to make is there are options out there. You don't. It's not like you're restricted with your salary cap. You have yep. money to spend. And for tight ends – there are two names that I've been saying consistently. Hunter Henry from the Chargers, because he's going to be an unrestricted free agent, and he's going to be a low-risk, high-reward guy, who Belichick yep. loves, by the way. Did you see at the end of the Chargers game when he went yep. up to Hunter Henry and talked to him? Yep. And then there's also, and I've been saying it for a long time, people still don't seem to buy in, is David Njoku in Cleveland, because they have three tight ends, Austin Hooper included, and Njoku asked for a trade earlier on in the season. So people forget Njoku's what he did before Hooper got there. Like yes. the Joku was a stud for fan, and this is you know a lot of it because you play if you play fantasy football. The Joku was a top fantasy option the year before Hooper got there. So yep. like he's a good tight end. I, I think Hunter Henry's the best option if you're gonna bring someone in like that. Um, if he doesn't stay out there, because I think I mean him and um, Justin Herbert have a great connection. So like you know that could he could stay. One wide receiver, real quick, you just threw out there, um, John Ross from Cincy, right? Yeah he already expressed he wants out like all of a sudden they just stopped playing him because you got Boyd, you got Higgins, you got other options there. Now, granted you might keep him because you want to give Burrow as many options as possible when he comes back. But like, that's a really good, like buy low option. 
because right. he's pretty talented. And before they got Higgins and Boyd, like John Ross was there and he was performing well. Like he, he was a really successful receiver there. So I, I think that's a good option. I don't know if they're going to pay through the nose. Like Corey Avis is going to ask for a lot of money. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because I really wish Belichick would spend some money when they have it. I just hope they don't spend money on like a bunch of tackles and don't even think about spending money on a receiver because they can't draft one. They, they can't, but the, but the last couple of years, haven't they really hit on a few of their draft picks? I mean, even on defense, like Chase Winovich for one thing. I mean, he's a guy, Kyle Duggar, another one. So like, so I, the, and this is something that people have been saying, the coach Bill Belichick hasn't hurt you. The GM Bill Belichick has murdered you mm-hmm. for this season. So now this is a test of you're going to get a, a top, at least top 14 pick, maybe even top 10. If you lose and you have a few things go your way, you could sneak into the top 10. So if you had a potential top 10 draft pick and all this money, this is the off season where it's going to be like, all right, Belichick 2020, whatever. But if you don't do something this year, then people are going to say Tom Brady was the reason that the dynasty rolled on. I mean, you can see there's reasons for both. If you look back at it, and that's something we can do eventually. Like, you know, there's games where you wouldn't like Atlanta. You wouldn't have won without Brady, um, but I don't think you win the Rams Super Bowl without Belichick. Like he he schemed and coached to, to on the defense side, right? So, because um, not like Brady had a great game against the Rams. So, th- there's definitely give and take there. The one thing for me is you look at where they are. Yeah, they've had some like really for me. Jacoby Myers is the only person that's earned her spot off this wide receiver core next year. You're not going to cut Gunner because everyone loves Gunner and and he's great on special teams. Um, you might, they're probably going to keep Nikhil Harry and, and see, and I, I think maybe with the right guy, he can still be decent, but like you need a Corey Davis, you need a Juju Smith. Now Juju's probably going to stay in Pittsburgh, but like you need that kind of guy and you had chances, right? Like you said, like Bill screwed you, like you could have DK Metcalf instead. You didn't do that. Patriots right now are at 14 in the draft. That's where they are right. As of right now, yep. Yep. you draft a quarterback there. Like, I don't care how high it is. I don't care if you feel like you can get him tw- two rounds later. You need a quarterback first, and that's how you build a team. Because right now, the best asset they have is Jake Bailey, their punter. That's like, pretty bad. And, and that's pretty you, bad. You don't – that's disgusting. You could argue Damian Harris is up there too. Oh, yeah. Running and, like, they have, a, they have a solid core. Like, I think this could not be – this is not going to be five to ten years. It just sucked. Like, I don't think it'll happen. But two, three years, if they don't find a quarterback, like, what they really need to do a quarterback – is bring in a veteran or even just a guy who's been in the league. You know, Mariota we've talked about since he came on and played for Derek Carr. Um, that could be an option for a couple of years. Matt Stafford's a big favorite, right? You know, if they're going to blow it up in Detroit, a couple of years of Matt Stafford, draft a kid, and, let, and that's the way you go and groom that position. Um, you got to find someone to maybe look at a quarterback because if Josh McDaniels leaves, um, and, he, and he said today that he wants to be head coach again, so, like, he might not even be here to groom your next quarterback or help you do that. The best option really is Jimmy Garoppolo if they can swing it um, because he knows the system. He'll come in here and work hard. You don't have to really groom him in the offense. And then you have a guy in, who can play for the Patriots for the next three, four, five years if, and then find the young guy who then Jimmy can teach. And Jimmy, and Jimmy knows the offense. So I think Jimmy Garoppolo – the more and more I've thought about this, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is the best fit. Um, and whether you – maybe you get on the phone with them and say, hey, I'll send you Stefan Gilmore and give me Jimmy, right? Like – Richard Sherman's up in age, give them a number one corner um, who you clearly don't need for the next couple of years. Um, he might want to go chance in another Super Bowl. Um, and then the 49ers bring in like Matt Ryan or something, or they bring in Matt Stafford, right? Like they could win a court. They can win a Super Bowl without Jimmy G. The Patriots need Jimmy G, I think at this point. Yes. And by the way, since you're on the show this week and we sort of, I don't, how do I put this lightly, crapped all over your take. Do you want to defend your Carson Wentz take? Guys, I'm going to keep saying this. He's had good seasons. Okay, and we're going to yeah. move on to the Celtics now. So uh, Yes, so- he is injury plagued. I get that. So, like, it's a big red flag. I'm not saying just bring in Carson Wentz and that's it. Like, I'd bring in Carson and Jimmy and let them battle it out and see who wins, right? If Carson's your backup, that's not a terrible thing if he doesn't beat out Jimmy G. I don't expect him to beat out Jimmy G. But, like, Carson Wentz is still viable. Um, as an NFL quarterback, and he's had seasons. The f- first couple years, he was really good, and then he got injury plagued. And I'm not saying he's not going to be injury plagued now, but like, didn't he play most of the games this year? And yeah, he sucked. But like, at this point, he has a coach that gave up on him. Um, and, and clearly, everyone in Philly wanted Jalen Hurts to be the guy. That's why they drafted. So, 
that that's a, just an easy low risk high reward situation that I'm all for. Um, I'd rather Jimmy G, hundred percent. He already knows the offense. It's plug and play. You bring him some receivers. He can probably he has he can bond with Jacoby Myers. Look, all I know is I do not want Cam Newton or Jarrett Sidham anywhere near the quarterback room next year. Yeah, like or Brian Hoyer. You got to cut bait completely. It's got to be a complete wash at the quarterback position because what you've seen this year, and I think you're going to probably see Jarrett Sidham against the Jets this week to end the season. You do not have a quarterback in the room that's going to be better. That's going to be good for you. No, you cut bait. You bring in a veteran. You draft a guy. You figure it out and you go. Like none of those guys are beneficial to keep around. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, like, I was one of those people that wanted to see Jared Stidham, see mm-hmm. him this year, see what he could do. And yeah, I'll admit that. that. That's fine. But I think we can all acknowledge that Jared Stidham and his opportunities has not been that great. Nope. And Cam Newton has not been – has been a failure. Yeah. He's been a failure. Yeah. The, the Cam Newton era in New England is a failure. And yeah. I think both of those statements can coexist. Now, before – earlier on in, earlier on in the season with some of those losses, like – Denver and Buffalo could you blame Cam Newton more yes but as the season went on could can we also say that Cam Newton will get less and less of the blame also yes because mm-hmm. like we've said Jared this roster is not that talented when you have Nikhil Harry who's supposed to be number one receiver and is probably at best a number two at best Jacoby Myers at best a number three Julian Edelman's hurt so is it Cam's fault necessarily not entirely. If I had to give a number for the percentage of blame, I'd give Cam Newton on the season. I'd give him about 15. The team got worse as the season went on. That's the thing. Like, the beginning of the year, you lost to Seattle. Cam's fault. Right? You're on the one-yard line. Cam's fault. Um, can't blame him for getting COVID, obviously. But, like, lost to the Bills. Cam's fault. <laughs> like, you go down the list. He played, like, garbage against De- – like, you look at the way they lost earlier on, it was all Cam. And that's where I think a lot of people are like, oh, my God, it's Cam's fault. It's Cam's fault. It's Cam-. These games later on in the season, the defense the is whole team, dude. The whole team. The team just sucks. Like, they're not good. And I think they said it last night on Monday Night Football, and, it's, and we've been talking about this. Brady used to always mask a lot of the deficiencies because Brady's so good that he can just toss out points and, and make up differences and come back at the end of games because that's who Tom Brady is. He's a GOAT, right? So now you don't have that. And now Cam Newton can't do that. Jared Stidham can't do that. Um, and look, I mean, this is something we want to talk about. I kind of feel bad for Cam Newton. A little bit. Because you watched last night. Yes, we know he sucks. He's been atrocious. But, like, you see the guy's schedule when they put him up on Monday Night Football. Wakes up at 4.30 a.m. every day. Doesn't have a copy, sip of coffee till 8. Is in bed at 11.30. He's the first one in, last one out every single day. You can't find a guy that talks bad about him, leadership-wise, in the club, like locker room. Like, you can't find a bad thing to say about a guy. But he sucks. Nice. And, he's, and, he's, and he said it in his post-game preface conference, like, man, it sucks because, like, I haven't seen my kids in three months. And this, I'm busting my ass, and I can't figure it out. Is, is Cam Newton washed up? Yeah, probably. Like, his career is probably over. He might be a backup somewhere. Like, cool. Right. But you got to feel bad for the guy because he hasn't been put in the best situation. Like, he signed on here because it was the only team that was going to let him start and play. But he hasn't had any weapons. He's busted his ass. He hasn't seen his kids. And he's the scapegoat for the team's lack of depth. Like – He's getting blamed for things the defense are doing. Like, oh, well, that's Cam Newton's fault. No. Like, Cam Newton sucks. Yeah, he's bounced balls. He shouldn't have bounced. But, like, he's still busting his ass. And do I want him here next year? No. But you can't give Cam all the blame for the Bills lost. Look what the defense did. J.C. Jackson got burned by Diggs. Like, come exactly. on now. Don't, don't just go after Cam to go after Cam. I get it. The quarterback position, Al, is the most important position on a football team. But it's not 100% on Cam anymore. No. It, no. And it's, and it's a telltale sign of – you had the Patriots with eight COVID opt-outs, including, like we mentioned earlier, Marcus Cannon, Donta Hightower, Patrick Chung. They had the most opt-outs in the NFL for COVID opt-outs. That's mm-hmm. going to hurt. You have a young, inexperienced defense. You had a lot of first- and second-year guys on that defense, especially in the front seven. The secondary, I think, is probably <laughs> the best part of their team right now. Besides And biggest J- disappointment. And biggest disappointment. And biggest they disappointment. They, last night, yes. But for the most part, I think they've actually been pretty good this year, the secondary. For the most part, they've had their good games. They've had their bad. But as a collective group, it's good. So if you combine that, and then next year, if you get Hightower back, and I know they're big ifs, if you get Chung back, the defense has another year of experience under their belt. You still have a young core of Kyle Duggar and Anthony Jennings and Chase Winovich. You know, so there are pieces in place. It's just this year, we should have been more 
I don't want to say realistic because we were being realistic, but I guess we just thought that there was going to be more talent on this team and more mm-hmm. moves made, and then there wasn't. I mean, so, the thing with this is, like, one, people also forget – Coming into the season, they had one of the hardest schedules on paper. Like they, they had one, last year, they had one of the easiest. They start eight, no, like everyone was great. Downhill from there, they've been terrible since that start. By the way, awful. Yes, and that's even with Brady, mind you. Obviously, the, with a real quarterback this year, not even Tom Brady, not even Tom Brady. With Tom Brady, this team is a playoff team, hundred percent. With a decent quarterback, like Andy Dalton, say Andy Dalton, better chance they have a chance to get the playoffs with Andy Dalton with this team. I think so. No, do I did I did I want them to sign Andy Dalton? No, no. But I think the Patriots had a chance to make the playoffs. They would have had a better chance with Andy Dalton than they would have with Cam Newton. And no, that's hindsight. We didn't know what Cam Newton was. Like at the beginning of the season, if you gave me both options, I would have said screw it, let's sign Cam. But and I did. But hindsight, look what they're do- look what Andy Dalton's now done with the Cowboys. They can win. They can get in the playoffs. They might win their division. Now the team has sucked, and yeah, Zeke hasn't been good. Andy Dalton has looked like recently what he did with the Bengals all those years. Ben- Andy Dalton got trash to the playoffs every year. Yes, he did. The Bengals. That's, and I don't that's, think enough people talk about that. Okay, you, you, you've talked me into it. At first, I was like, where are you going with this? You've talked me into it. The, the whole thing for me is this. A lot of people, including yourself and Quags, like I listened to the earlier episodes before I came on as a full-time co-host, you guys were excited about Cam Newton being here. And, every, and everybody was excited about it, but I was one of the people – Granted, it may, it may not have been the popular opinion, but I was like, why are you so excited? There's a lot of things that are, that are up here, and a lot of people are like, oh, he's going to be fine. You know, the, the offense, you can do different things now, which you, you still did. But it's like there was a reason that Cam Newton didn't get signed until June when the season was two months away. There was a reason. We now see that reason. And like you said, he's probably not going to be a starter anywhere else. The only place, the only two places that make sense to me are Chicago and maybe Indy. That's it. For as far as Cam goes, to maybe have a shot at playing besides the Patriots. But otherwise, like, and this is based on his performances. Like, when's the last time he had over 120 yards passing in a game? Maybe four or five weeks ago? Maybe. Yeah. So so that's my thing. It's like, I don't know about I, I think I know where you stand, but I'm done with the Cam Newton experiment in New England. It, you got to yeah. move on. I think, I think everyone is. Um, it, it's whatever. Like, they didn't have a plan to, after Brady. I think part of them really thought they would just come back. Like, I, I honestly think, by the sounds of it, obviously Brady, we know Brady made up his mind pretty clearly before the last season that this was going to be his last one last year. But it kind of sounds like Kraft and Belichick kind of just assumed he'd come back. Um, and he didn't. And, and that kind of left the team in a bind. And he obviously didn't care. He's down in Tampa. And, taking shots at the cold weather and what we all thought he was. But, like, you, you look at what the Patriots are, their best attack is that top pick needs to be a quarterback. Like, if they take a guard with a 14th overall pick, like, shoot me. Like, that can't be the option. you got to take – you got to draft a young quarterback, whether it's, you know, Mac Jones out of Alabama or someone else. Um, you take a quarterback who seems like he has very high potential. And that's fine if you're not ready to play him right away. That's okay. You can groom him, teach him your offense. A guy like that you, allows you to do a lot more than the offense you're used to doing anyway if you can get him up to speed. But then you bring in a guy like if it's not Jimmy G, Matt Stafford, or, you know, again, I'm okay with Carson Wentz or Mark Mariota, like just a couple – A.J. Green. I mean, not A.J. Green. Um, you can, Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton didn't sign – I think he only signed a one-year deal. Like you have other options out there that are similar to what you want to do offensively that, that are like a 180 of Cam Newton to get you through two, three years – until a young guy that you draft this year, this year out, have to draft a quarterback. We'll be ready. Let's just get into the Celtics. This is just getting sad. Have to draft a quarterback. Yes. Have to. Have yes. to, have to, have to. 14th overall pick, that's probably where they're going to be. I don't care if it's a reach, you draft Mac Jones. Like, if he's on the board, you draft him because he's gone, and that's it. Like, that, that's your guy, I think, because the other two will be gone. Um, all right. Patriots playing the Jets Sunday. We're expecting to see Stidham. I'm intrigued. Only, only reason why I'm intrigued, and again, I don't want him here next year. Before we went, only reason why I'm intrigued is because if they actually give him the starter reps this week, what he can do. Because, and you, I'm waiting for it. If he gets the starting reps this week and is going to be the starter, he has a little bit of a good game because he got the reps. Everyone against the Jets, he's gonna, everyone's gonna go, oh my god, he's the guy. See, when you get him the reps, he can play. We know Sidham sucks. He needs to be gone. 
But like, I am intrigued to see if he gets named the starter, what he looks like when he knows and he's preparing for it. Boston Celtics. And then we'll wrap up the show. Mike Celtics, my team. One and two. Our, and our team. We're, we're big Celtics. One, one and two, as Al sits their video with a Celtics logo behind his head. Um, one and two. Their only win, Al, is opening that against the Bucks. Jason Tatum heaves a three and happens to bank it <laughs> after blowing a 17-point lead, mind you. Um, Celtics are one and two. They play again the Pacers tonight um, and the Grizzlies tomorrow. Al, there's a lot of different ways we can talk about the Celtics team. Have they underperformed? Probably. I didn't expect them to beat the Brooklyn Nets because I think, I honestly think after watching them, the Brooklyn Nets are the class of the league. Like the class of the, at least the class of the East. Like those guys are legit. Kyrie and Durant can play. They have, they're the deepest team in the league, I think, because look, everyone that basically started last year is now on the bench. So, and the Brooklyn Nets were a playoff team last year. So that team is probably the deepest in the league, which is also in a year like this where COVID could change things on a drop of a hat because they're not in a bubble anymore and they're playing a lot of back-to-backs or every other night. It's like, you need to be deep this year, and Brooklyn is. So they're probably the best team in the East. The Cavs are also 3-0 right now. That, that Magic or what? That like Magic or 3-0. Like, that won't it's last. a weird start to the season. It's a weird start. Timberwolves, I think, are 3-1, 3-0, something like that, out West. Like, it's a weird start to the season. I'm not concerned about Celtics being 1-2 no. when, mind you, they probably should have beat the Pacers. Um, they've played well enough to beat the Pacers, and they had a shitty third quarter again. Yep. Al, let's start here. Indiana Pacers, first two quarters, they had a lead going into the second half. Um, and even at the end of the game, too, mind you, like, they won deep, they, they, had, they took the lead, they had a good play, and then they had a defensive lapse, didn't switch, they get a layup, and then the game's over, and then Tatum heaves a three, right? And we'll get to that. What is with the Celtics in their third, third quarters blowing leads? Like, this goes back to last year now. Like, this is even just a this year thing. Like, they're still doing it. I, I'm starting to wonder if it's a Brad Stevens thing. I'm starting to wonder if Brad Stevens is not really conveying the message that, like, yeah, it's great that you played well in the first half, but guess what? We still have another half to play, and we're notorious for giving up – and giving up big runs in the third quarter. There was one point where the Pacers went on a 16-2 to two run, like, right at the beginning of the second half. And at that point, it's like, what are you doing? I think the defense is very lackadaisical at times. I think it's a, it's a, it's almost a conversation where you have to tell your guys go up and defend. Like Indiana was a team that they don't shoot a lot of threes, Jared. They like to pound the paint, and they prove that. Look at the very end of the game. Demontis Sabonis goes to the hole on a pick and roll miscommunication from both Williams, Robert and Grant, and yeah. they win that way. So with Indiana, if I'm, excuse me, if I'm the Celtics. I defend the three and let them try to drive. I'd rather give up a two than give up a three, especially in an NBA now where a lot of it is three-point shooting. So why don't you take that to your advantage? Also, I really think Kemba Walker being out is like – it's a veteran presence that you need on the floor sometimes to calm you down. But Mm -hmm. it's also a case where on offense, if you're you're having these spurts that the Celtics are also notorious for going on these scoring lulls, if Kemba Walker's on that night and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown aren't, Kemba Walker's the guy that you can turn to. So he's becoming more valuable than people think. Yeah. I, I think people forget how good Kemba is still. Like, I think people in the city just don't value Kemba the way she, they should because of what Kyrie was. And despite his attitude, like Kyrie is one of the better players in the league, obviously. And like, I would have loved to have Kyrie work out, but even like, like the first two, three quarters of that Pacers game, and so far in the season, all the beginnings of games, Jason Tatum's making the right plays, right? You know, he's making the extra passes. He's finding guys open. His passing has been great this year. Like he's finding guys, you know, Grant Williams has been successful from three. Like, he, they're finding guys to hit their shots. And then all of a sudden, they shut down at the end of the game. And I'm all for, like, Tatum being the guy. Like, that, they, he got his max deal. Like, it runs through Tatum. I get that. But where's the mental toughness then? Like, if you're the guy, and I think this honestly, you say it starts with Brad Stevens. I think it starts with Jason Tatum. It's his team. If, and he's the common. Like, every time this happens, it's always on him, right? And, it's, and you look at the Pacers game as an example. He was making the right plays. Their offense was looking decent. People were hitting open games. Tatum was – I mean, Brown was having a good game. You know, other guys were having better games than Tatum was. You have seven seconds at the end of that Pacers game. You're down by one, Al. Pacers don't have a foul to give. All you got to do is get fouled. You don't have to be shooting, and you're going to the free throw line. Tatum pulls up from 28 feet. 28 feet. Now, granted, 
he was open and he can make that shot. And I'm not doubting that he can make it. You've seen him do it. But as a game winner in the right, in that situation, it's not the best shot. It's not the right shot. It, All you got to do is drive to the shot. hole. All you got to do is drive to the hole and you're going to get fouled. Like that's it. And if you do what you've been doing all night, Jason Tatum, you're going to pass and find an open guy who's probably shooting the ball better than you, whether it's Pritchard in the corner, who's been playing well, you have Jalen Brown out there, right? Um, You'll have a guy because everyone at the end of games, Jason Tatum's the guy. Everyone's going to swarm on you. Either you go up and try to get the foul, you dish the ball. LeBron's good at it, right? Like LeBron's really good at dishing the ball to the games now. Like Jason Tatum needs to take that step. And I think these lapses run through him. Because even if he's not on the floor, it's his team. It's his responsibility. The NBA only goes so far with coaches. Like, it's a player's league. And as much as Brad can be blue in the face telling them, like, guys, what are we doing? If Jason Tatum doesn't play with example, by example, like, how, do, how does Marcus Smart feel when he watches Jason Tatum huck up 28 foot threes when they're only down by one? He's probably ticked off just like all Boston is. I mean, they throw in I, chairs in the locker room again? Like, that'd be kind of funny. But if you. If you looked at it, Jared, and I'm sure you saw it on Twitter because you're a big Twitter guy like I am, I think it was Tucker Boynton that had it out there. He had a, a montage of the last yep. six game winners that Jason Tatum took, and only one of them went in, and that was the one against Milwaukee that, you know, thank the Lord, went off the, went off the glass and in. Yeah, he missed. He missed. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, yeah, thanks, Nick Wright. But in all seriousness, it's like, you know, how is it that – you're going to be a superstar in this league. You're arguably a top 10 guy in the NBA right now. But your shot selection at the end of the game, when the game's on the line and you need to be Dog clutch, shit. it's awful. Like, it is, it is putrid. Like you said, drive to the hole because what might happen is defense might swarm you. Guess what? Robert, Mil- Will- uh, sorry. Robert Williams might be just sitting under the basket waiting for a nice, easy pass. Who's, who has been great this year? I love he, Robert he looks- Williams. Don't trade him. Don't no. do it. No, no. And like Robert Williams looks like he's going to be a top guy in this league. Like I won't say superstar at the realm of like Anthony Davis, but like the amount of athletic ability that dude has at that size, it's like stupid. I know. So, so here's something that I want to ask you hypothetically, because I've been noticing this and you, you sort of touched on it too. Peyton Pritchard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Celtics obviously used the first round pick to get him along with Aaron Naismith, which, by the way, where has he been? I mean, I want to see Aaron Naismith a little bit more in these games, but whatever. He's young. He's, he's a young. I think, honestly, I think Pritchard's only playing because I think he's a better shooter than Naismith, and they need someone because Kemba's hurt. Like, once Kemba comes back, I don't think Pritchard gets as much time either. I, eh, he might get a also, few minutes Kemba, now. Kemba, Pritch, Pritchard's is a dirt dog. Like, if you watch Pritchard play, he's playing because he's doing the dirty little things. Like, he's getting on the floor. He's making – he's playing good defense. Like – you got to be really on the right spot to play as a rookie. Naismith's probably better, but like Pritchard's probably doing the right things. And that's what Brad's about. Right. So, so let me ask you this. And this is obviously just a hypothetical. I know that the rumors have been around James Harden because we know Harden wants out of Houston. Mm -hmm. We don't know where he's going to end up. I personally think he's going to end up in Philly somehow. I don't know why, but they, he just, he seems like a Philly guy. Don't know why. Would you do something or let me better question is, what do you think it would take to call up the Minnesota Timberwolves and say, hey, what's it going to take to get Carl Anthony Towns? Because Carl Anthony Towns is a guy that he hasn't said one word about the, the Timberwolves, you know, rebuild or whatever it is, even though he's in a crappy situation. He's the answer. He's uh, one of the best centers in the game. I mean, there's just yep. no two ways about it. So I'm wondering if you could do something along the lines of, you know, maybe do a package deal of like Romeo Langford. Um, you know, Carson Edwards and somebody else and a, maybe a pick or two to try to get Carl Anthony Towns here. Because especially if Peyton Pritchard's playing over these guys, like Carson Edwards is not going to see the floor. I'm sorry, but Carson Edwards is not good in my book. Yeah, like I think he's decent. And I think on a team like the Timberwolves, like, I don't know. I think Carson Edwards has value. I would even do, consider like Tremont Waters. You know, like that's a guy that has probably more value. Um, all these deals that come up, Harden, a potential cat deal, right? Like, if Jalen Brown's name comes up, you don't do it, no matter what. No. Like, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are literally only – how old is Jason Tatum? How old is Jalen Brown? 20, 24? 20, 23, 24, uh, Tatum's 22. Yeah. So, LeBron didn't win his first title till like, 27, 28. 
um, a lot of other guys are in the same boat. Jordan, Michael, right? Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan didn't win his first title. Look how many losses they had before they finally he finally got through. Tatum and Brown will be like Thompson and Curry. Like homegrown, grow together, draft a couple year a year apart, and are gonna grow and help his team win. And obviously the door is now, like it's Tatum's team, I think a little sooner than Danny was expecting, because I think he expected Kyrie and Hayward to work that initial plan, which they would still be playing together if it did work. Like if in Danny's head, Kyrie Irving, Danny, uh, Gordon Hayward and Al Horford would all still be playing on this team. They would have had a chance at a championship by now. And that would have worked. Clearly it didn't. So I think Tatum and Brown have been threshold into it a little further, but like, could you imagine, right? Like Kyrie Hayward Horford with Tatum and Brown right now, like, okay. Um, their real championship window is as far as Brown and Tatum will take them. That's why I don't think they're contenders now. Can they win one? Could they get through and win one? Yes, I think they have the ability, but I don't think they're like, oh my God, put them right in the finals. Like in three years, and I know we've said this a lot of Celtics fans, but like think about Jason Tatum in three years. Think about Jalen Brown in three years. They're in that 28, 27 window. That's prime years. And think about Jason Tatum now, not in his prime. Jalen Brown now, not in his prime. This team goes as far as they do. Now, granted, I'm watching them. I'm enjoying them. I can't wait for Kemba to come back. I think this team has issues, and it goes where Tatum goes, where Jalen Brown goes. And in three years, I will say championship or bust. I know a lot of people in Boston say this because they've been to the Eastern Conference Finals three out of the last four years. It's not championship or bust because they're not that kind of team yet. Right. And, and you know what? You're, you're in a league now where Milwaukee, Brooklyn – you know, you're dealing with a hard Eastern Conference, Philly, Toronto. Uh, I, th- I think I'm missing another team. Indiana, I guess you could throw in there. Is there another team I'm missing? Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Philly, Toronto. Heat. Yeah, Miami. Thank you. I knew I was missing one. Miami, like, you have the opportunity to build towards your future. Like, you signed Jason Tatum for an extra five years. If you don't win in year one with him on that max deal, it's okay. Not a failure. No. It's not, not at all. If you can get back to the Eastern Conference semifinals this year in a stacked Eastern Conference, that's fine, especially with such a young team. But in a year or two, if you don't make a move to try to get a big-time guy, then then what are we going to say? Are we still going to say, oh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they're still really young? It's like, yes, but it's not like when Michael Jordan was with the Bulls and he was by himself. You know, he he didn't when he didn't have Scotty, when he didn't have you know those guys. Like when Jordan was by himself. It was a lot for him, and he, he went off, and Jason Tatum was going to have these stats. He's going to be an all-star. You know, he, he might have a run in MVP after this year, like, but he might not be ready to win a championship yet because of the cast. And a big thing that's looming is that trade exception, right, from the Gordon Hayward situation. That's a $20 million, right, trade exception? Like, so, 25 maybe even. It's a, I think it's the biggest one ever. It right? is. So what are you going to do with that? Like that, that's a, that's a big time player coming in for that salary. And, and that you, and probably, that probably will be used this year because it has to be used within a full year of that situation. So it was a good chance at the deadline. Danny uses that to bring someone else in. So this team is going to be, I think better, obviously second half team this year anyway, because they'll get Kemba back and everyone will kind of flow into their right situations. You know, Tegan Thompson will be a little more comfortable, even though they've looked good since they've came on board. Add player X to the mix at the deadline. Mind you a decent player for that kind of money then what does this team look like? Um, and are they on a contract that's worth two years where they stay here past this year? You know, that exemption for Gordon Hayward is huge. Mind you, side note, but I will say this while we're talking about him. F everybody who said Gordon Hayward's not good. Like, that He's dude good. is killing it in Charlotte. Him and Terry Rozier, old teammates back together again. Uh, they were with ball and all those. Like, the Hornets have a decent roster. And Gordon Hayward, man, for all you guys who think he just can't play basketball, and sucks and is trash. I saw so many like Instagram stories, like get this guy out of here. I mean, you need, you could use Gordon Hayward right now, guys. <laughs> like, right. like you could use Gordon Hayward. Um, that being said, he's not here. Obviously that exemption is also big. Fully agree. Could not agree this, more. This, this Celtics team, man has potential. Um, I think people are frustrated because they just watched them play in the Eastern conference final. Also have to remember they're one of the teams who did just play in the bubble. And one of the longer teams that went in the bubble, obviously, they're exhausted. Like, they just played how long in the bubble, just got back. I think a lot of players were advocating to not start the season this early, and they did. So, like, you're looking – and this is a good explanation for 
the Cavs, 3-0. The Magic, 3-0, right? Those teams that didn't play and haven't played, they have fresh legs. They're going to beat up on some of these teams, right? The Nets are obviously good regardless, but, like, the Nets weren't there in the bubble that long, and KD and Kyrie didn't play all year, basically. So they have fresh legs, so they're going to get off to a faster start. The Celtics need some time here, guys. Like, do not go throw in the panic button because they're one and two. Like, they're gonna be, they're gonna be fine. I think they're gonna win tonight. I do. Oh, even they'll win Victor, tonight. Yeah. Even with Victor Oladipo back, I still think they're gonna win they tonight. Win. And I think yeah. they're gonna. Who are they playing? I think they're playing Memphis. They'll beat Memphis because now John Morant's not playing either. Yeah, they, they, they're gonna be just fine. And then they yeah, play the Pistons. They play the Pistons back to back. And they'll beat the Pistons. And they'll beat the Pistons, guys. They're gonna the be Celtics fine. Are fine. Chill. Like they're one and two. Have a young season. They have one of the best tandems in the league for moving forward. They're gonna get Kemba back, guys. I will say this too, real quick, Al. Tristan Thompson has been a delightful sight for sore eyes. At I like the, Tristan Thompson at the big position, and I think a lot of people who watched him over the years with the Cavs in the Eastern Conference knew what they were getting. But some Celtics fans who just kind of watch the Celtics, like he, this is what he is. Like he's gonna yell at some guys. He's gonna be hard nosed guy. He's not obviously Kevin Garnett, but like he has he's a bulldog. He's Marcus Smart only bigger. Like, and he's going to, he's seen, he's going to go balls to the wall to get your rebounds. He's going to go after people. He's going to defend you to the day and he's here to win. So, and Jeff Teague should be starting right now. I'm also going to say that. Oh, actually real quick. Do you think, do you agree with that? Jeff Teague, Marcus Smart, who would you rather start? I'd rather start Teague and bring Smart off the bench. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I'm not going crazy. And, and, and I got an even spicier take for you real quick. I think Robert Williams should start. Oh, I love that. I'm a big Time Lord guy. It's not I, hard to tell me I, that. I, 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 like, I like Robert Williams. Bring Daniel Tice off the bench. You see, that's what I would do. I would do Trimson T- Thompson. You can't sit Thompson. Like, he's here to start. So, Tristan Thompson and Time Lord. Daniel Tice off the bench would be great. Like, Daniel Tice off the bench? Are you kidding me? That'd be so – him and Smart is smart coming off the bench is what this team will look like probably at the, towards the end of the year. <laughs> and Excuse me. And you look at that. If Time Lord – and, and Tristan Thompson start, Daniel Tice comes off the bench with Marcus Smart, which will happen later on once Kemba comes back. Cool. Then you have coming off the bench, Teague, Marcus Smart, Daniel Tice, or time. Like now you're deep with Grant Williams, with Pritchett. Or, you know what I mean? Like when this team has everybody in place, they're a pretty deep team. And I think that's going to help them. So don't press the panic button, people. Enjoy the fact that you're watching Celtics basketball because the Patriots suck. Uh, Bruins aren't back yet. Bruins get, the Celtics get a few weeks to themselves here in Boston. So, Enjoy it. Red Sox, oof, whenever that happens. Um, <laughs> that was fun. No, Nick should be back. Nick, Nick should be back next week. I don't know. He's crazy. We'll see. Um, we'll see. Who knows? Um, follow us, obviously, Couch Guy Sports is the network at Couch Guy Sports Podcast. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher. Follow all the other podcasts, all the written content, um, everything. Do it all. Obviously, we, we've talked about it forever. we got stuff going on. Twitch channel, subscribe there. The YouTube channel, everything there. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Episode 188 in the books. Uh, and don't forget, for me and Al's sake, keep an eye on into the triangle. A little surprise. A little surprise. A little curveball, if you will. A little curveball. A little curve- Ooh, a little baseball pun. I like it. Throw a little curveball at you. 12 to 6 action. Hope you can hit it. Couch Guys Sports Podcast, episode 188 in the books. Al, we'll talk to you next week. Maybe Nick, maybe not. Who knows? Talk to you then. <laughs>